Hi Sam, how are you? I'm good. I love you. Hi Jen, come on in. How are you? I'm good. Love you. I'm gonna show you today how to make masafan, the star cookies that you like. And we're gonna start from scratch. Every home in Baghdad did it as uh, cookies for pa during Passover because it didn't have flour. And uh, there nobody bought cookies in the stores like here today, so everybody made their own at home. So we're gonna put like that, and we let them boil for two minutes. So you don't wanna boil them too much. You don't wanna lose too much of the almonds, and you take a little bit at a time, okay? And it's hot. See? Now you can try. They just pop out. As it gets cold, it's harder to blanch. You take a few at a time and you blanch them. And it's fun, actually. You could watch TV and do it. Ever since I was little, I've been baking. My sister also. We've been baking with our mom different types of food because she's Ashkenazi. When we come here, we learn to make the Iraqi foods, mostly desserts because it's more fun. And so now you take them and grind them as you need them. We put a handful like that into the cuisine. You don't put too much at a time because it will not ground, grind well. And here it goes. See, it's chunky. If I keep it in the cuisinar, it's gonna give a lot of oil. So I'm gonna do this. And then I'm on. Okay, you guys finish it up. So we want this. There's no actual recipe. I'm gonna give you the ratio. You can make one cup, you can make 10 cups of cookies. The thing is, to each cup of almonds, ground almonds, it takes half a cup of sugar. But I don't like it so sweet. So I put less than half a cup. Now it's fun, go with your hands and mix them, integrate them so, they, so the sugar and the almonds don't stay lumpy in one area. Okay, the cardamom is optional. This is a quarter of a teaspoon. You can put more, you can put less. Now mix the cardamom in. We crack the egg. Take it out, I go in my hand, I let the whites go through, and that's the egg whites of two egg whites because we had two cups. I put not all of it, you see I leave a little bit of it, just in case uh, it's too wet, or if you put all of it, you always have a little bit of almond to add to it, so to make it the wrong, yeah, now you mix it. Yeah, mix it. Make it into a dough. Try to get it as moist as... I used to play not this dough. They never let... This was too expensive a dough to play with. <laughs> so it was with the regular dough. When they made the cookies for the week, I used to, they used to let me there's, play with um, it. There's another recipe that I used to make. The dough that she uses for almost all the cookies, it's just simple. We would take some of them and just make our own shapes out of them. Yeah, they used to have fun with it. That's what I used to do when I was a kid. Very sticky. That's right, very sticky is right. That's the consistency that it should be. So now we're gonna shape the cookies, Jennifer and Samantha. And always remember to put parchment paper on the tray. We're gonna pour some rose water. You take a little bit of this and go like that so your hand is wet so it doesn't get sticky. You take that and we roll it try to make them into even quantities, okay? So now we take your hand, do like this, take that, the ball, and roll it between the, between the palm of the hand and squish it, okay? Now we take this and we start pinching it. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, now you do it. Very good, Samantha. One, two, three, four, five, and we go. <laughs> I 
I think you should do it all over again, Jennifer. <laughs> go like, see, look, look at me. Mm -hmm. Go, you see how it's rolling between the two palms? You see how it becomes like this? Now, put one on top of each other, squish it, see? Now take it, here, I'll give it to you like that. Where are you guys when I need you, when I cook? <laughs> so I don't have to stay hours. <laughs> So they had tenur, they called it. I think it's a clay barrel, and uh, I remember fire at the bottom of it. And a woman would come and she would wrap her hand with a lot of cloth, and she would take the cookie, whatever it is you're making, and she would go like that on the, on the wall of the tenur, and she, one by one as they cook, she will take them out. So always they had to hire a woman. That's my memory as a child. But now I'm sure you go to Baghdad. They have all ovens and uh, this is talking oh, old modern. times. It's modern now. The kemar is the cream of the black mousse. I think it's a mousse. And the taste of the cream is different than the cream we have here because kema used to be the breakfast that we had. The Arab woman would be barefoot and she would have trays, round trays, like huge on a few of them on top of her head and she'd walk with them. And it's like the milkman. You want her, you call her, you bring your plate and she would cut a slice. It would be round tray, so she would cut a slice with a big needle, like a crochet needle kind of. And she gives you the slice that the amount that you want, and you'd eat it with the silan, with the date syrup. We never had maple syrup because there was no maple in Baghdad. So it was date syrup. Tastes yeah. very good. Yeah. It's really good. The Sephardic version of haroset, which we eat at the Seder, is made with date syrup and crushed walnuts. And then we go to our other side of the family for the Ashkenazi version, which is what's more well known with um, apples, cinnamon, and wine, walnuts. So we have variety. Now before we put them in the oven, this is, this is my roller, what I roll the dough with. You wet it with the rose water, and we go make a dent in the center of mm -hmm. each For decoration, cookie. So that when you bake it no, because it it's gonna puff up, and we don't want it to puff up too much. So just slightly. You want to do it, Jen? Sure. Yeah. Not, no, you're pushing too much, gently. That's it. Just, just a little, that's it. Exactly. Perfect. So in the oven, Jennifer and Samantha, always remember to put an empty tray on the lower shelf of the oven. Because if you don't, it burns. And uh, this goes exactly on top of the other tray. It was 1952, the state of Israel came into being and the Jews were being persecuted in Iraq. And nobody knew what, what Canada is or where it is, but it's a place other than Israel that will accept us. I mean, my father had to start from scratch and uh, we had to go all to different schools and learn the language. Weren't you 13? I was 13 when I left. I just finished, uh, I was just going into high school. When I was in Baghdad, I had long, long hair, longer than yours, and was blondish. And I hated it because I could never wear it loose like this. Always had to be braided. We were sheltered against the Muslims and the Arabs. They'll see like a white girl with long hair. And so now we're coming to Canada, right? And it's modern, I'm going out of, Iraq, so uh, I went to the hairdresser and I chopped my hair short before we were leaving. And everybody was so upset, how could I cut my hair? So I said, please could I have a pair of pants because we're going out of Iraq and you always see in the magazines girls wearing pants. So- Everybody always wear dresses? Uh, yeah, in Baghdad everybody, girls wore dresses. So we come to Canada and first day of school, so I put on my pair of pants and my shirt and my hair is cut short. And I go to school and I'm the odd man out because everybody is in skirts and dresses, nobody's in pants. And every girl there 
had ponytail with elastics and my long hair is not there and I'm with the one with the short hair and anyway so I go there and they're all asking me where are you from Baghdad nobody knew where Baghdad was where's Baghdad Baghdad is in Iraq and what are you what religion are you I'm Jewish do you speak Yiddish I'd never heard of Yiddish no I don't speak Yiddish I'm Jewish. No, you're not Jewish, you're an Arab. I said, no, I'm Jewish. So that was my introduction the first day of school. <laughs> I got married at uh, didn't turn 17 and I was shy to say I'm getting married and everybody, they're going to the prom. I never went to my prom because I was married by then. I was in New York. And uh, when I was at the wedding, they heard that I'm getting married and the whole class came on the side to see me getting married. I, I'll never forget that. So, they're good. they're good? You like them? You think you're gonna make them? Mm -hmm. I remember my grandma when she was in Baghdad. And I remember as a little kid what I did, like now you cooked with me. And we'll come back to you when you're in your own homes and you want to do it. Somehow you'll remember my movement or whatever I did. I remember a lot of things being in the kitchen watching. The kitchens there were not as nice as our kitchens here. They were the dirtiest place in, in the house. Uh, how? I would come over and cook and, you know, it was fine to keep up with her and do it, but she doesn't write down measurements. She mostly just does it, you know adding, tasting, and figuring out as she goes along. So I remember she told me that for my bat mitzvah, she would put together sort of a cookbook of all my favorite recipes. And it took me a long time because each recipe like I had to make and um, take a picture of. And I wrote her a story of uh, where I was born and life in Baghdad and the family tree. I asked Jennifer, what would you like, a continuation of the story? She said, no, I'd like to know how you became a good cook. So I talked about my grandma and whatever, and I told them the story, how I cook and what I cook. And uh, so they have the, the two together. <laughs> That's how they make movies? <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs>